I run about 10 3D printers at a time in my flat above another person, so it causes a lot of vibration to go downstairs, and whilst I've had no complaints yet, I'm, I'm aware of the noise. So today we're going to be trying to mitigate that even further than I already have. We're going to be using the BQ Panda cushions, and we're going to be putting them on our six P1Ss here to see how much they can actually help. Oh, but just use concrete pads and foam. I already tried it on every single one of them. We're on these garage racking shelves. They're not touching the wall, so and they're on carpet, so they shouldn't go through to the floor, but it does. I go downstairs and I can hear them. How she hasn't complained downstairs, no idea, but I do want to see if we can stop them. So today, we're going to be installing on all of these printers, running a test and seeing if there is actually a difference. So BQ have sent me products in the past, but they have not sent this one. These are going to be purely my own reviews. I bought them all myself. We're just going to see what's in the box. So it says, reduce, uh, reduces lateral vibration for precision printing, improves stability with advanced shock absorption, no tool installation, requires no modifications. So these are for the P2S, P1S, P1P, X1C and X1E. Even though some of them are being decommissioned soon, it will fit all of those printers. So in the box, you do have tools. I'm not 100% sure why. Tallest installation. I think it's so you can screw them into the I don't know, wood, wherever you've got your printer. But this is just what they look like. So you can see here, this bit comes out. I assume that bit just goes on the floor. It's like textured. Kind of see. And then that bit is just where the foot of your printer goes. We'll have a look now. We'll take one of the printers down. We'll put it on my table and we'll give it a go installing it. I just wanted to note these are a fairly new product. So when you scan that QR code there, it might be different for when you do it. When I do, it brings up the wiki page with with nothing. It's got nothing at all. Just Panda Cushion XP. They they don't have any information about these or how to install them. BQ's guides are normally pretty good. This is not one of them. But before we do that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be printing this benchy here on each of the printers. I'm going to be running this decibel app for the first, I don't know, five minutes of the print just to let it get sorted because it'll show the max, which I can just reset by tapping it. It'll show the peak and it'll show the average. I'll find a consistent location that I can put it on and we'll test before and after using the feet and without the feet with what I've just got going on now to see whether it actually makes a difference because I think I spent like over a hundred pounds getting these. So hopefully it was worth it. Right, so you just saw the clip of where it got, they've all been at least between like five and 15 layers in. It was hard to get them all started at the same time. It doesn't get much worse than when the startup sequence, when they're all doing their vibration tests anyway. When they're just going, they're just going. That's fan noise. That doesn't go downstairs. That gets trapped within this room as soon as that door's closed. I can't even hear that in my living room. So I think that'll just be the, the bar for the test. We're gonna put the feet on now and then we'll compare to what you've just seen, and we'll see if it makes any difference at all. I'm interested to see whether I hear any difference, whether it's purely just gonna be a vibration difference, and maybe I'll have to go downstairs to, to check whether I can hear it. But we'll stop all these now. There's no reason for me to complete the Benji. It's 45 minutes for nothing. And we'll see how easy these feet are to actually install. What I'm really hoping is that I can just lift up the printer a little bit and just place them underneath so they just fit on to the, they do, have a look. So you can see, I just lifted it up and I can feel like the, the bounce in it. It's gonna raise the printers by a decent amount, but I'm pretty sure I can just lift each one of the corners and just place the feet on like that. I'm gonna go and do that to all of the printers and we'll see if it makes that much of a difference. I just wanted to show you here how much of a difference there is. There's probably three quarters of an inch in it. So if you're like me and you have AMSs and you've kind of left room at the top of your shelf to open the lid of the AMS, you may need to rethink that. So whilst I can still get a spool in and out of here, 
it's there's not as much clearance as they used to be. So maybe take that into consideration when you're about to do this. I think I'm still going to do it anyway. Dealing with that inconvenience is going to be a lot better than dealing with an angry neighbor. Yeah, that was something I didn't consider at first. Okay, so all the feet have now been installed. I'm gonna start the Benchy on every single one of them and we'll see if it makes a difference on the Decibel app or whether I just notice any difference at all. I think there's gonna be quite a difference. I, I can feel it. If I shift the printers, I can feel that they've got like this springiness to them. There is some sort of disconnect between the concrete blocks and the shelves. So I have high hopes. I've spent $98 on all of these, so hopefully it makes some difference at all. Let's put them on and we'll see. Right, so as you saw, I left them all run and it's around the 10 minute mark. I marked the decibel rating again. So before we installed the BQ Panda feet, we had the max at 83 decibels, the peak, which is just what it is at currently, was 61 decibels, and then the average being 57 decibels. But after installing the feet and around the you know, nine to 10 minute mark, we had the max at 72 decibels, so a decrease of uh, 11. Then the peak, which was the current, which is at 55 decibels, and then the average at 50 decibels. So even if, you know, maybe the peak was just one thing was slightly different, the, the current and the average were both way down after installing these. And I was kind of worried that it wouldn't come through on the decibel meter because we're measuring vibration and maybe not current sound levels. Like if we were installing different fans, that would be a different story. But even then, even on the decibel meter on my phone, we could notice a difference and not only that, I could tell there was a massive difference. So once I put all these printers on, because I work right here, the printers are there. So I would feel it. And I can definitely tell there's something. My desk doesn't vibrate. Even when just holding onto the shelf, it, it really does stop it. If I could be bothered to remove all the concrete blocks and test it with just these, I would, but this concrete box isn't gonna be causing no harm, but they would have only been better than it would have been anyway. That's the reason we have the concrete box. And I forgot to say, under the actual shelves themselves, under the wooden slats, I've got blankets. So there isn't that resonance chamber between the carpet and the actual shelf itself. But even that, that ended up doing nothing. Uh, I've got no soundproof other than, other than the curtain, but they're just for the window. Um, but you can see there's a marketable difference. Whether it's worth $100 too, it depends on whether you live in an apartment or whether these are above or next to somebody's bedroom. I'm really just trying to stop the vibration getting through the floor. I doubt they're doing much to get through the walls, but maybe, like I said, I did notice something in here. So whilst these are expensive and there are cheaper, much cheaper and print your own options on the market, these are different. Um, like I said, I'm not sponsored in any way. Buy them, don't buy them, I don't care. See if you can print your own and make your own. But would I say they were worth it? Maybe if you have a hundred printers, that's gonna be quite pricey. You can be paying, uh, paying close to like a grand-ish. But they're about $11, $12 for a set. I do think they could be a little bit cheaper, but I see where the cost comes from. They are solid. I just wish there was some way to actually secure them to the printer itself. So whilst they aren't cheap, I think they're genuinely worth the peace of mind that you would get by not having neighborhood complaints or even just in your own home. I do think they work. So if you can find out that these are an alternative, then I'll leave the link down in the description. Again, no commission, no reason for you to buy them there. They're also on Amazon but we just bought them from BQ's own website. I might end up using a bit of sticky tape just to keep them on the printer themselves because every time I move the printer is a bit of a hassle to put them on, I wish uh, BQ would have thought of that. But maybe they can tell me what the screws in the box were actually used for. If they actually update their wiki, I'll read through that. So I'm not 100% sure. If you run 3D printers in your house or you know of a way to make your printers quieter, please let me know. We run mostly the P1Ss, but we have other printers too. So give me your best tips and tricks. We have a Patreon in the description if you want to support us and get some items that you can either sell or use personally. We're uploading stuff as much as we can and obviously in the next year we 
really do plan to keep on top of this. We want to make a video every single week for the next year. So please support us on Patreon and help that uh, help make that happen. And subscribe if you want to see more videos. The next video we're going to make is how much money 3D Print Land, our business, because we sell online. How much money did we make on Etsy? And possibly we'll show you on our website and TikTok too. See how that goes. So if that's something that interests you to compare to yourself or what you could potentially be doing with your 3D printers, especially if you just got one this Christmas, then follow and check out next week's video because that's what we'll be uploading. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.